Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is Wissam Sharif for Knowledge Travels uh, with a video of the day. Video of the day is a reflection on something that I noticed um, after listening to two, two, three khutbat here, listening to a few lectures, um, praying in various masajid. <clears throat> it's been a couple of days here in Egypt and you start to get a sense of people and you, you assume that everything's different around the world. But there's a commonality. There's a commonality um, wherever you go. And it has a lot to do with your appearance and the way people want to take from you as opposed to what they will not take from you. Now what, will, what does that mean? Um, on average, when you go to, uh, to, speak, someone who, to speak to someone who's uh, Islamically inclined, I don't want to use religious, it has a very, uh, it's a very weak uh, definition. I, I want to use the term <clears throat> When someone who's more Islamically inclined, the first thing they do is they'll shake your hand, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, they'll check your grip and they'll check to see how high your pants are, or why you're wearing a t shirt, or how you carry yourself uh, in, in regards to uh, whether there's a miswak in your pocket, whether it's been used or not. That's the first thing they check, they check to see outward experiences. Now, that kind of got us thinking because we were sitting and listening to a khutbah. And during the khutbah, we heard a very, uh, very precise recitation, uh, a very accurate control of the Arabic language, uh, quoting of various ahadith that connected to the, to the, to the theme, and really just a, and then and a person who has had the ability to kind of flow from one topic to the next, and we're sitting outside. Now, as soon as the khatib finishes the talk, they crossed, they crossed in front of everyone. This uh, young man just happened not to have a beard, for whatever reason. Now immediately, what we thought was an amazing, amazing khutbah, immediately kind of transitioned into, oh my God, he doesn't have a beard. Uh, and I'll give you a real example. The downstairs masjid here, uh, one of the young uh, brothers there, he leads the salah, and he recites beautifully. The first day I saw him, he uh, had no beard, and was very, very um, <clears throat> modern in his dress. Now immediately someone came to me and said your salah doesn't count behind him, he doesn't uh, have a beard. Now before you jump to conclusions, which we all did, um, somebody just went up to the brother and said, oh brother, how old are you? Turned out to be 17. So was it a fact that he had a beard or he didn't have a beard or that it just wasn't possible for him to grow the beard? So <clears throat> in today's video of the day, I'd like to uh, bring reference to a a, uh, a quote that is attributed to Ali radiallahu anh. Ali radiallahu anh makes a a very wise statement and it here says ila ma qala wa la man qala. look to what was said not to who said it look to what was said not who said it so on a day where we are surrounded with scholarship and there is wisdom to be extracted from everything that we hear, whether that person is on the same exact path or you, of, as you or not, is there not huck to be taken from the various scholarship around us? And that's something that really made me reflect. For the sisters, if a sister comes to you and she tells you about <clears throat> the rights of your husband, but she didn't cover her chin, and you believe that she's supposed to cover her chin. Do you reject what she told you? If a sister who's not wearing niqab or a sister who's wearing niqab tells you something healthy, it's really good to uh, speak to your parents in a, a respectful tone. Do you immediately say, no, she's too extreme for me. So the girl who didn't cover her chin, she's not religious enough for you. The girl who covered her face, too religious. So does Islam have to fit your perception of what's religious? See, again, put the word religious. Because we all defined it on our own. And I leave you with that, that concept. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out in verse 177 of Surah Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then defines 
So he says, religiosity, spirituality, bitter, taqwa, bitter. Acts of, uh, of uh, worship, all of these things are encompassed in bitter. Is not merely, is not only turning your face from right to left. It's not one thing. It's not only the beard. It's not only keeping your pants up, uh, from dragging on the ground. It's not only carrying a miswak in your pocket. It's not only having a clean heart. It's not, it's all of these components together. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who don't cut any one part of the things that we hear and then say, I like that. But Allah subhanahu wa we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people who take the complete picture. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us to seek wisdom and to completely enter into Islam, not pick and choose. This is Wissam Sharif for Knowledge Travels. Jazakallah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.